So if you have an open wound, I'm sorry, but that's part of the process for healing in certain circumstances. And we want to make sure that you understand how to take care of that best. Uh, and to make it least problematic, uh, you need to understand the processes that we're doing. Um, with an open wound, usually that means we've started out with an infection or an abscess, and we can cut out the infection, but if we sew it back together again, you'll have another infection reaccumulating in there within days. Uh, so that wound needs to be opened up and let the body's blood vessels and healing come from below and slowly fill that space and close that space down shallower and shallower and it eventually heals. And if you've not seen that happen before, you'll be a little bit of amazed that it actually does heal. Uh, and the good Lord's given us the potential to heal pretty massive wounds um, and re-stretch the other adjacent skin in and, and make things uh, uh, as least problematic as possible. But in the process of doing that, we like to have the wound open enough that you can clean it out easily. Uh, and initially, uh, when the infection is there, uh, there's a lot of extra blood vessels that are opened up. It wants to bleed. So you need to understand what we do. When we're draining the abscess, we get all the pus out of there. We get out the cavity. And then we have an open hole that's really bleeding a lot during the operation. And the best way to get that bleeding to stop, uh, assuming that this is the hole that we've created, and hopefully nobody's got a hole this big, uh, we're going to stuff gauze into that hole and use that to apply pressure because first aid says you apply pressure and you will stop bleeding. So we apply a lot of gauze into the hole and put enough pressure on it that it stops bleeding. And in order to stay stop bleeding, we want that gauze to stay in there for a couple of days. So generally about 48 hours after this has been placed in there is the soonest that we want that gauze taken out. If you leave the gauze in there with that pressure, it will promote another infection. So you can't leave it in there a week or it'll give you trouble. So for most patients, they're going to be responsible to take this gauze out of there and we want to make that as predictable and least problematic for you as you can uh, because it may be the grossest thing that you've ever done before with yourself or help your spouse out with or whatever. So when it's time for this to come out, about 48 hours after the operation, uh, I would like for you to take a pain pill because it's going to hurt. And then wait about a half an hour, 45 minutes after your pain medicine's on board before you pull it out to minimize the pain. And then to minimize the discomfort, uh, although it's been pretty dry before that, at this point you can soak it. If this is on your rear end, sit in a hot tub and soak in the tub for a half an hour. If this is on your arm or something, get a hot compress and let it get it good and wet so that this gauze starts getting soaked inside the hole there and that'll make it easier to come out. Once you've been had your pain medicine on board for half hour, 45 minutes, and it's been soaking somehow for 20, 25, 30 minutes, that's when it's time to take the gauze out. But I want you to think about where you're taking it out. If you're taking it out in the kitchen or your bedroom or something, you're going to get a big mess. You need to take this out in the shower where you can wash things down where it's contained. Because the correct way to take this out is not to slowly pull it out kind of like a band-aid. You want to do it all at once. But if you noticed as I was putting that in there, there was a lot of gauze in a long strip. And the proper way to take this out is to do it with your form fully extended and do it like that. You want to use your full arm extension and pull it all at once and get it all out all at once. And it will be sometimes three feet long. Uh, so the correct approach once your pain medicine's on board, once your environment is, corre is correct, is to pull it all out su suddenly. Ouch! Good thing you got pain pills on board. Good thing that this whip didn't throw blood and betadine all over your kitchen or your curtains. You've got it in the shower so that it's not going to be a big cleanup problem for you. This you're going to throw away. Uh, and then your hole is going to be painful for three or four minutes. 
After that, it's going to bleed a little bit. You want to put pressure on it. If it's on your rear end, just sit back in your tub and sit down on it, and that'll be enough pressure to solve it. If it's on your arm or something, just apply pressure, and it will stop bleeding. And then you have this open hole that now needs to be cleaned out. One way to do that is to continue putting gauze in there with some disinfectant on it, but then you're into this process over and over again. Um, and that is disquieting to many people and is uncomfortable. And the least painful way to keep this clean is to use a handheld shower head and spend five minutes twice a day, particularly the first week, water picking the hole and washing it out, washing it out, washing it out. For the first two days, that's gonna be a painful process. You don't have to have the water on super high. You don't have to have it on super hot. Get the water comfortable, get enough flow that you're getting penetration into that cavity, but you don't have to, you know, water pick it with the elephant wash. <laughs> Let's get it clean, but not necessarily scoured. That's okay. If you're doing that twice a day for the first week, by the first three or four days, you'll find that it really is relatively painless and you can use a higher pressure stream. And because of that, in the second week, we'll go down to one showering episode once a day. If this is on your rear end and you're having trouble with your bowels, keeping things clean, you may continue doing it a couple of times a day to keep things good and clean. Uh, then you have an open hole that's good and clean. Uh, you might put a little bit of neosporin or bacitracin in there. Um, uh, but just cover it with some, some gauze and keep it clean and dry otherwise. And as time goes on, your body will heal this by compressing that hole and making it smaller and smaller. It will heal in from the deep side and make it shallower and shallower so that instead of having your big cavity, you'll have a smaller slit, a smaller hole that's shallower and shallower until it scabs up and heals. That process will take uh, a month to three months, depending on the size of the hole, depending on your overall health. If you're a diabetic and your blood sugars are over 250, over 150 on a regular basis, you're gonna heal very slowly. Uh, if you're healthy and eating a good diet, um, keeping it clean and dry, you'll have a faster healing experience. At any time uh, during the healing process, you are going to notice that right around the rim of the hole, it'll be red. If it's only red about that far away from the edge, that's the healing process. That's new blood vessels growing in. That's gonna be tender. That's gonna bleed a little bit sometimes, but that's not a problem. If the internal part is all yellow, that's the fat underneath there, as that heals and as this is getting more shallow, you'll notice that that becomes red and bright red and bleeds easily. And that's a whole new layer of new blood vessels growing in that we call granulation. Your grandma would have called it uh, proud flesh. But that's the healing process coming in from the deep and that little bit of blood is a good sign. If you're prone to infections, diabetic, or if this was a MRSA germ or something, if the redness at the edge is extending out by an inch and getting bigger and more painful, then you have a superficial infection and you will need antibiotics. So at any time that you have concerns about an open wound and how it's healing, calling your surgeon, texting a picture is your easiest and safest way to get your, uh, your anxieties relieved or get your concerns addressed in a timely fashion. Uh, because going to the emergency room with an open wound because it's a little red, many times will be a six hour, $10,000 experience and being patted on the head and saying it's okay. So give me a call, text me a picture, I can save you time and money and hopefully reassure you and certainly take action sooner than later if need be. Uh, so that's how to manage an open wound uh, the location will make a big difference in how easy it is for one person to do it. Uh, but uh, a $15 handheld shower head at Walmart can really save you a lot of trouble compared with packing open wounds. <music>